when we do slip, <laughs> when we do make mistakes, when we do sin, the enemy uses condemnation That's as good. a weapon against That's us. Very good. You are saved by grace. Thank God for mm. His grace. So there's a very heavy responsibility to keep the breastplate of righteousness on because in the heat of battle, if you take it off, Absolutely. about this series and I have no doubt that you are going to be blessed. You know the Word of God is a very powerful tool and every believer should be skilled in it. That's how we're going to live in the abundant life and victory that Jesus won for us on the cross. In fact, when we understand the Word and we know how to apply to our lives appropriately, it actually begins to transform us from the inside out, that we can become the overcomers that we were always meant to be. Now, in the series of The Higher Life, we have been delving into the truth concerning the armor of God. And I'm so excited about this because to help me bring out the truth and the richness of the word so that you know how to practically apply it, we have got some very special guests. I want you to help me welcome my friends to the High Life set. So to start off with, I'd like to welcome Tracy Tredre. Welcome Tracy, lovely to have you. Tracy is the founder of Real Women Real Life Television Program and Women's Ministry. So Tracy, we can't wait to get that wisdom from you again. Also, we have Titi, a very special friend of mine, Titu Goro, all the way from Vintuk, Namibia. Titi has a very special ministry as well, a women's ministry called Women of Vision. So glad to have you with us. And of course, we have Linda Shooter from Lady Rose Magazine and Women's Ministry. Linda, thank you for being here. Also, a very special, beautiful friend of mine. So we are going to be blessed by what is inside of you today. Also joining us in a very, very special friend of mine, a powerhouse of the word, we have Rayana. Thumbrim, all the way from Logos Bible Church, Centurion Pretoria. Welcome, Rihanna. In this program, we are going to be dealing with the second part of the breastplate of righteousness, a vital piece of our spiritual armor. Won't you come with me to find out what the Word of God has to say about this? Well, we are so excited to get into the Word again. As you know, as part of our Higher Life series, we've been discussing the armor of God. And we are now doing the second part of the breastplate of righteousness. We have found out it is a vital part of our armor simply because it protects the vital organ of our hearts. Everything that makes us who we are in Christ, it's protected by the breastplate of righteousness. But as we were finishing off our last series, Trace, we went into the truth. We just started touching on the truth of the responsibility of being righteous. Remember, Jesus made it very clear that we do have a responsibility. We came out of works. We have by grace received right standing with God. But now we have to walk in righteousness. Yes. yes. I think there, there's a great lie that the enemy chucks at us every day that as believers, you are saved by grace, which we are. Thank the Lord for that. So you don't have to worry about living right. Hmm. You can just live as, as you want, live free. And I don't believe we talk enough about the, the fact that the wages of sin is death. Yeah. Correct. Even as believers, if we choose to live in sin, it will bring death to our lives. It brings separation. It brings separation, mm -hmm. it brings distance, it brings death. Now picture a soldier in an army. Imagine if the soldiers in the middle of battle, picture this, this, this like whole legion of army guys and they, they're really fighting, the enemy's chucking um, arrows at them. And there's one soldier that stands in the middle of the battlefield and he goes, oh, I'm tired of all this. <laughs> Checks the darts flying around, oh, now I'm tired. 
off goes the breastplate of righteousness. Right. What's going to happen He's to him? He's exposed ladies? himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. He exposes himself yeah. to death. Mm. The wages of sin is death. So mm. righteousness is something we receive as a gift. But there's a responsibility as a, as a child of God, as a soldier in the army of God, we have got to have, the, we've got to understand our responsibility to live right. We are all ambassadors for Christ. Mm -hmm. Do we know how we are being watched every single day by unbelievers? And believers alike, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they watch our lives. They watch and they mm -hmm. make sure. And if they see you sinning, it gives them reason to sin. Right. It justifies the reason. Well, it feels like it reason. does justify. It justifies yes. the yes. reason. Yes. So yes, we are saved by grace, but we are ambassadors. And if you go to another country, you are representing that country. So your <laughs> lifestyle has got to be above reproach mm, very we've good. got to pursue it it's not something that happens instantaneously mm -hmm. you're not going to wake up the one day and automatically everything's going to be perfect and your drug addiction is going to be gone and your thoughts of lust are going to be gone it's not going to happen immediately it's a process mm -hmm. but we have got how does 2 corinthians 4 speak about we're moving glory by glory yeah. step by step into how jesus sees us mm -hmm. so there's a very heavy responsibility to keep the breastplate of righteousness on because in the heat of battle if you take it off yeah. Absolutely. Hey. <laughs> and that scripture that you're speaking about, it says, as we behold in the word yes. of God. The word of God. Mm. The image. Yes. That mm. our image becomes changed into the yes. image of Christ. Again, yeah. it's a process. Yes. Righteousness isn't a process. That's a gift straight away. Straight away. But yeah. now we need to behold. That's why it says in, in Romans, it speaks about Romans chapter 12, yeah. that we cannot be conformed to this world. Exactly. I mean, really? Why would you wake up in the morning and say, I can do what I want when the word says very clearly? clearly mm -hmm. Don't be conformed yeah. to this world, yeah. but rather be transformed yes. by the renewing of, of your, your mind. mind. And it says that is actually our reasonable service. That is what is just expected of us yeah. now that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. We seek after righteousness. We walk after righteousness. Yeah. Not the right uh, our acceptance. Yes. That acceptance is there. It's yeah. already there. Yeah. But now we live that way. Live Rihanna, you, the word of God has been so good to you, really. Mm -hmm. uh, you have got revelation that has saved your soul yes. and this whole issue of condemnation and conviction it's a huge thing in the church today mm -hmm. bringing this all into the breastplate of righteousness and knowing we still have to be responsible to walk after righteousness won't you bring that in well, you know, God cannot be mocked. Correct. <laughs> Whatever we sow, we will reap. Yes. And that's a spiritual universal principle. And so by the word and by his grace, we walk in rightness. Right. But that doesn't make us righteous. Yes. It's his blood that makes us righteous. Oh, that's that's just our sanctification and our good. development mm. and transformation. But I think in the daily life of a believer, it's on the flip side of that, it's also so important to understand that when we do slip, <laughs> when we do make mistakes, when we do sin, the enemy uses condemnation that's as good. a weapon against that's us. very good. I truly believe that today a lot of the weakness in the body of Christ are believers who do not understand their authority because when you don't understand your righteousness you cannot rise up in your authority yes. right. but when your sin is no longer a problem and you know that that's Jesus has dealt with the sin and you've been forgiven now you have confidence now you have that boldness of that's a it. lion that's now right. when you're staring a uh, cancer or sickness or a dead person on a come deathbed on, on, you, 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 you don't feel that condemnation mm -hmm or that unworthiness, but you realize that I am the righteousness of God and I can speak to the sickness and command it to go. Yes. Whether I slipped this morning or didn't, yeah. I'm still the righteousness Amen. of God. I'm Love still it. God's authority in I the like earth. Like Smith it. Wigglesworth, I, I raised what, 50 or something people from the day. Every day he took communion mm -hmm. to remind himself that he was the righteousness yes. of God because sin will creep in daily, yes. but we have to rise and say, not allow that to become that pattern because what you sow, you will reap. Yes. If you sow to the world when you'll reap destruction. That's so, right. But we, but, so we understand that we do have this responsibility, but when we're walking out of our authority, we cannot allow condemnation of the enemy love to it. hold us back. I love that. In fact, Tracy, you mentioned separation. Well, we sp mm -hmm. we've been speaking about separation. Now, the Word of God makes it very clear that He's not going to leave us. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's not going to leave us. He says, I'm in there, I dwell in you. And the word of God says, he will dwell in you forever. Mm -hmm. He is in you. 
The separation doesn't come from him leaving you. It comes from you disconnecting yourself. And as you said, whatever I sow then is exactly what I'm going to reap. And like you said, all I've done is open up my heart, expose myself to a lot of pain, a lot of misery mm. because I'm choosing to walk in that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad you said that. There's consequences to your actions. Always, yes. So, so we are righteous irrespective, but there are consequences. You cannot expect, such a silly example, you cannot expect to jump off the top of a building and start flying. Right. The, the law of, of gravity is going to make you Splat. Splat. Hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. Hit the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise, we cannot expect to live in sin yes. and yes. reap the benefits of the fullness that God has for like us. Like that. He yeah. still loves us. Yes. He still makes us righteous. We still are righteous, but we cannot expect to live in the fullness. In that abundance. In the abundance, yes. in the joy of your marriage. If you want a beautiful, wonderful, successful, happy marriage, you cannot be consumed with thoughts of lust for another man. Let's get real, Come ladies. On. That's this good. is real things. You cannot look at your husband and say, he's not providing for me, he don't love me, he don't give me what I need, he don't see me, he don't hear me, when your mind is in the gutter. Yo. Jesus says very clearly, it's not like the Old Testament, New Testament, what you think <laughs> is what you, you do. You just have to think the thoughts of adultery and he sees it as if you've just done it. Yeah. And that is what I'm talking about, the consequences of your actions. You are still righteous, but there are consequences to sin. Well, you're not going to live in the fullness of a happy and fruitful marriage. In a happy right? and fruitful mm -hmm. marriage. Awesome. Linda, come. I think that the main thing where condemnation comes in is sin. Yes. So people feel sin, and then Satan comes with the lies and say, you're not going to heaven, God doesn't love, that's not true. Sin will never keep you out of heaven, because Christ is, once you've, given, already paid yes, for once you've yes. given your yes. heart to Christ, yes. there's repentance, there's all these things. So I'm talking about a believer that has accepted Christ. God walked the road with me concerning holiness. Mm. And when the word says we must be holy, for God is holy. So when you hear the word holy, you think it's people that's flying around on air and they super spiritual that's not it no. and he showed it to me in such a beautiful way concerning holiness is to be set apart so the moment you receive the breastplate of righteousness your sin is still there and you're working on it with growing from glory to glory that will not keep you out of heaven because christ paid the, uh, the price right. but holiness is a process it's choosing to put on the breastplate of righteousness and to be set apart mm -hmm. and how he showed it to me was so beautiful we were on holiday and the children were playing with all the other children and they were dancing to music and yeah and they the, a song came up and my kids were in between all the others now i'm watching from a distance because in this time god was teaching me on holiness and a song came on, I think it's Superman, Batman, Sp that song. And I saw all two of the, both of them um, stop and they moved out of the crowd. Sure. They stepped out and they were standing one side. And the moment they did that, God said to me, that's holiness. Wow. Is when you choose to be set apart from what the world is doing, which is sin and all these things that the world is doing, you choose to step out of that to be set apart and to follow His way and his heart that is holiness we're not super spiritual it's just to be set apart in fact and titi i want to get to you next but what you just said that set apart mm. that's what humility is yes. because you know and and this is good for the righteousness teaching because self-righteousness always says i'm humble mm. and when, when i'm humble that means i'm like poor and i just you know never think anything of myself. That's false humility. Yes. Real yes. humility is yes. to say, not my will, but God's will. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, it's not my, what I've done, but it's what Christ has done in me. Yes. So suddenly we change in the whole perspective. Humility is being set apart for God, yes. walking in your righteousness, yes. saying this word is the way I choose to live. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? That is so exciting. Mm -hmm. Titi, come yeah. on. Let's I hear. just want to say something based on what you said. When um, minds are filled with filthy thoughts, mm. uh, because before you go into the action, uh, you don't do anything without thinking it first. That's good. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever right. things are good, yeah. it's mm -hmm. for you, it's not talking about, it's like, think on these mm -hmm. things. So it has to be a deliberate effort that you make on your own. That, okay, even though I think 
I'm interested in that man because my husband is not doing this, as you said, mm -hmm. is to now sit down and begin to put the word of God in you because the word of God says, for my thoughts, my thoughts, That's right. my mm -hmm. thoughts, God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, for I know the thoughts. Mm -hmm. So God also has a thought for you and I have a plan for you. So you take the word of God and change what is inside mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. with his word. The word of, as you said, do not be conformed mm -hmm. To this world, but be ye transformed by and the renewing yes. of your mind. We all face that. The enemy comes to us with evil thoughts. You are not the only one. Yep. It comes to me with his thoughts. Mm -hmm. Oh, can't you see that that lady is better than you? Why are you overweight and that one is slim? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, we go through that. Yeah. Why are you like this? Why are you not preaching or teaching like Jenny? Mm -hmm. And you, you are just loud. Things like that, just to throw. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, but Jenny is better. You are not good. All those silly, silly things that the enemy throws at our heart. Yeah. But then we take the word of God yes. and replace whatever thoughts the enemy is putting in our heart. Mm -hmm. The word of God says, mm -hmm. whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Ah, Listen, mm -hmm. your heart that is being protected is where your faith is. Mm -hmm. And that's what the enemy will want to attack. Your faith in God. Mm -hmm. So faith is of the heart. Okay. So we've got to protect we it. We have to. We have yeah. to protect. In yeah. fact, again, I'm thinking about how it says we are saved by grace. Mm -hmm. through, through faith. 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 Through yeah. faith. And so yeah. the whole thing about our righteousness again mm. is, yes, it's a gift that Jesus gave us. Mm. But from now on, the just shall live, live by faith. faith. And how do you get faith? Faith comes from hearing, hearing, and hearing, hearing and hearing and hearing the, the word. word. So if we are going to live as the righteous, that means we are going to live by faith. Mm -hmm. That is, you cannot separate one from the other. You are saved by grace. Thank Amen. God for mm. His grace. Amen. But you are saved by grace through faith. Mm. And if we are not staying in the Word, Word of God, and we're not constantly, you spoke about mm. thoughts. Mm. If our thoughts aren't constantly being renewed to His, in fact, His Word actually says mm. that His thoughts, our thoughts actually become conformed yeah. to it His thoughts. Mm. thoughts. So the more time we spend in the Word, the more we begin to think as He, he thinks. thinks. Yeah. And That's if you are thinking as He thinks, yeah. as a man th thinketh, so is, so he. is he. So is he. Mm -hmm, that's and right. that's why we have to bring in that link. Trace, tell us a little bit more about this whole thing of walking in the word, walking in righteousness. You know, there's a scripture that, that I've written down here, which is a beautiful scripture from Proverbs 23, verse 26. And it says, give heart to God and let your eyes delight in his ways. Nice. And, you know, when, when we love, when we fall in love with Jesus, well, let's, let's make it simple. When you fall in love with someone, when you fall in love with your husband or your boyfriend, some of you may have to think long ago it's when that day happened. But when you fall in love, what do you want to do? You want to please them. Sure. You want to wear their favorite perfume. You want to grow your hair long if they like long hair. Because why? Not because you're being forced, not because you're being compelled mm. to do it, but because you love them. You love them. So because we love Jesus and when we fall in love with the person of Jesus, we want to delight in his That's ways. Good. That's good. We want to do what he says, not out of compulsion, not because Tracy, if you don't do this, you're going to suffer a life of death and misery. No, because we want to please him because we love God. We love his ways. We want him to look at us and delight in us. Mm -hmm. What a joy. Where does it refer to um, Jesus or God dancing around us? Yes. He dances mm -hmm. yes, around yes, us. Yes. We want that. Where is Zechariah? Somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. It refers to God dancing. Zephaniah. Uh, Zephaniah yeah. Dancing around Zephaniah us. Zephaniah 3. That's correct. What a pleasure yeah. to mm -hmm. think yeah. that God the Father <laughs> would come down off his throne and come dance in our midst. Mm -hmm. And when does he do that? When we delight in him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it. how do we delight in him? By doing what his word says. Oh, and you know, we're getting to the end again. Oh, I'm thinking through. But before we go, I want to just bring this in. Yeah. Um, in the word of God in Psalms, 
um, the psalmist is actually speaking about Jesus in it. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what I love about mm -hmm. psalms because David often, he got a revelation yes. from the Lord of things that mm -hmm. was still, I mean, you know that in one of the psalms it speaks about the whole thing of the cross as well. Yeah. But now here we are. Uh, and in the <laughs> psalm, it's speaking about Jesus. And it says, because you love righteousness. Yeah. That's because right. you love righteousness, yes. your God, the Father, Him. has crowned you and anointed you with mm. joy, the yeah. oil of That's joy. Right. Yeah. In yeah. fact, it's the oil of gladness in the yeah. one translation. Yeah. Far above yeah. all of your companions. Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. Woo! Do you see what that's yeah. saying? It's yeah. saying if I understand who I am in Christ Jesus, yes, I'm accepted. Yes, there's nothing that can separate me from His love, from who He is. And because I love, love him, him, because I delight in Him, not mm. only will He give me the desires of my heart, but He has blessed me and anointed sure. me with the oil of gladness. And every Everybody around me can see. Yeah. I am so happy to be alive. I am mm. so blessed yes. because I love righteousness. I love my yeah. God. Yeah. I love His Word. Yes. This mm. is not a battle for me. Mm. This is not something that you have to force mm. me yeah. to do. Yes. I don't have to write it on my thing of priorities. Mm -hmm. It just naturally comes. Mm. I love the Lord. I love His Word. Yes. I love what it does to me. I love it that it prunes me. Yes. I love it that it cleanses me. Whoop. I love it that it does everything mm. I I need because it's him it's him it's right, him right. and so I believe that you have gained so much just from these series yes. on knowing what that breastplate of righteousness will do for you as a believer and believe it or not it's time to go to our studio audience because they have got some really vital questions that's going to bring out again the truth that we have gleaned from the Word of God. I'm so excited about this, ladies. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've only got to the second, the second, <laughs> armor. The second piece of armor. But we, we have a journey to go together. Please make sure you stay tuned because this is going to bless you. Well, here we are again, and we are so excited about what we have gleaned from the Word of God. Its wisdom is rich on the inside of us. And I have no doubt that there are those of you at home or wherever you are watching this program from, and you have your own questions concerning the breastplate of righteousness. We'd like to encourage you to email us at higherlife at myfaithtv.com, and we'll get to answer those as soon as we can and bring bring you the wisdom from the Word of God to do just that. But here in the studio, we have a very enthusiastic audience who have their own questions to ask concerning the breastplate of righteousness. Ladies in the studio, who of you here have a question that you'd like us to answer today? Excellent. I'm going to ask the lady in the pink second row, won't you please stand up? I want to find out why as Christians we persist or walk in unforgiveness. Why do we insist on staying in unforgiveness? Linda, can you answer that for us? Unforgiveness is a choice. So when you choose to forgive, it's not a feeling. So when you choose to forgive, the forgiveness has taken place, but people act on the feeling, then they think that they haven't forgiven. So the feeling will eventually subside as you continue forgiving. So when you have made the choice to forgive, don't act on the feeling to think that you haven't forgiven. Just continue forgiving that person until the feeling subsides. Love that. I love that answer. We have time for another question. Any other ladies here with a question? Ah, lady in the blue, won't you stand? What is your question for us? I just wanted to know, how can you practically turn what we've learned today from head knowledge into being who we actually are? Titi, I can see that smile. Um, you have to walk in the word. The word says... This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous and also have good success. I remember I had a challenge with my body some time ago. That was in the 80s. And I knew that I know very well that the word of God says by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. But I couldn't get it from here 
to my heart. I knew it, but I'm not, I wasn't experiencing it. I kept on speaking the word and I was acting it out, even though I didn't have the revelation. But one day the revelation came to me. I jumped out of bed and that was the end of the symptoms. Love it. So Amen. stay at it. Love it. Amen. Again, awesome. Thank you. So, Evan, in saying that, we know that faith, Faith is believing in the heart, and faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Those of you who are at home, I know that even now, the word of God is inside of your heart. It's in a place that you are going to make it your own. Concerning the breastplate of righteousness, it has been an amazing piece of armor, but it's something that has to be received in our hearts. I'm sure that if you do have questions and you would like us to answer any of them, email us. I want to remind you, encourage you, email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com and we will get back to you concerning the wisdom of God and your answer is going to be right there. Well, that has brought us to the close of the second part of the breastplate of righteousness. Again, this is such an important piece of the armor of God. And I'm so glad that you are part of this and got blessed by it. But let's thank our panel. We've been absolutely amazing. We've so enjoyed getting to the fullness of God's word and my studio audience. Oh, what a blessing it has been. And to you viewers who have been watching this program, I have no doubt that you have gleamed a wealth from the Word of God. Don't forget, we are going straight into the next part of the armor in our next program. Do not miss it. Until then, God bless you and goodbye. There will always be only two choices in life. The one was disobedience and it led to death. Right. The other one was eating of the tree of life, which according to Revelation is Christ. This person did wrong to me. I don't feel like forgiving him, not knowing that when you don't forgive, you keep yourself at That's the it. hand of the enemy. That's what it is. The word of God that becomes a part of you, yes. let me tell you, it transforms you yes. that you don't even want yes. to sin. Yes.